Depreciation Basics Problem 4. On January 1st, Year 1, Grapefruit Corporation purchased a machine for $40,700,000. Grapefruit's management expects to use the machine for 30,000 hours over the next six years. The estimated residual value of the machine at the end of the sixth year is $41,000. The machine was used for 3,600 hours in Year 1 and 5,500 hours in Year 2. What is the depreciation expense for year one if the corporation uses the units of production method of depreciation? All right, depreciation. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into this. Let's look at what the question's asking. What is the depreciation expense for year one? Remember, if it's asking for a specific year, focus on that. If the corporation uses the units of production method. So this is one, this is a, 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 a unique method that's focusing more on the use of machinery or different items in a business. Again, there's different methods that a business can use in estimating depreciation and calculating depreciation. Depreciation is just an estimate. We understand, again, that property plant equipment, certain property plant equipment other than land has to be depreciated. The calculation is not perfect. You can use different methods. There's not a required method by gap. Here, the company uses units of production. We're going to go through and I'm going to show you the steps. So we've got lots of information. We've got the amount it's purchased for, what the company expects to use the machine for over, over its life over the next six years. We've got residual value. We've got how many years it was used in year one, year two. Okay, let's look at the formula. The formula to calculate depreciation, we're going to take cost minus residual value. And then we're going to divide that by the useful life in units. And units can be different. And by the way, this is step one. This is the first step. So step one, I know I'm doing this. I should have said step one first. My apologies. This is step one. We're going to do this calculation. And when we say in units, it could be different. It could be widgets that come out or, you know, you're producing something. It could be hours that it's used. It could be days it's used. It could be different types of units. So let's go ahead and let's calculate that. The cost, 40 million $700,000 minus the residual value. The residual value here, so that was the cost, sorry. Got to underline, underline that. The residual value, we're told, at the end of the sixth year is $41,000. $41,000. So, boom, you got that formula. Over the useful life in units. We're told it's expected to last six years. Is that the useful life in units? No, that's the period of time. That would be the estimated useful life over time, which we do for double decline balance and for straight line. But we do not use the number of years for this method. We use the number of units expected. So here, use the machine for 30,000 hours. So we're going to divide that over 30,000 hours. So step one is we get this measure per unit, per unit. That gives us the depreciation per unit, which here is per hour. That's going to be $1,355.30 per hour, per hour the machine is used. So that's step one. Step two, I'm going to flip the order here a little bit, flipping it on you. We take this depreciation per unit, which we just calculated, so 1,355.3 dollars and 30 cents, 1,355 dollars and 30 cents, and we're going to multiply that by the number of units, I'll write it down here, the number of units in the year at question. And if you replace this machine in service halfway through the year or part way through the year, it doesn't matter because we're gonna you're gonna be, need to be given the amount used for that year. Well, we're calculating for year one, and we're told in year one that the machine was used for 3,600 hours in year one. So we're gonna multiply by 3,600 hours, and we multiply 3,600 hours times 1,355 dollars and 30 cents per per hour. We get four million. $879,080. Now, here's something interesting. We know that the machine is expected to have a life over six years. Over six years. The idea is when you get to the 30,000 hours, you basically 
are done depreciating. Hopefully we get through the six years, but what if you get only through through years five? Well, then you just stop depreciating because that is what the estimate is, 30,000. That we focus more on the the number of units rather than the period of time. So if we don't make it to six years, okay, well, it only made it to five years. That's fine. If we make it longer than that, right? Because for example, it's estimated to be over 30,000 hours and over the next six years and are, you know, we go by the amounts used each year. What if it doesn't last? What if it goes longer than six years? Then at that point in year six, you would just take whatever's left. You would just take whatever's left. So that's basically why we have over the next six years. They, they're, they're putting basically the six years as a ceiling. But again, we focus more on the 30,000 hours. So that is how we calculate the amount for year one. Now, before I go, if you want to try calculating year two, do the same step one. And then for step two, you take the $1,355.30 per hour. And you're going to multiply that by 5,500 hours in year two. You can go through, you can make up other numbers and see how things would work. Again, if you run into actual hours um, that are um, less than 30,000, I'm sorry, that get to 30,000 hours before year six, you can do that and you would just stop at 30,000 hours. But if you go beyond six years with the hours, you basically stop at year six and you give whatever's left to year six. Again, with the caveat that um, you've, you're taking into account the, the residual value in the beginning. So it's important to note that you won't be going past that residual value amount.